when bar owners are irresponsible, people get hurt. She just took another shot. No. <laughs> this is. Oh my God! This can't be happening. Uh oh. What's up, guys? It's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, let's go check this out. Kansas City, the sixth biggest sports town in America, just a mile away from the stadium. It's RG's Lounge, which fails to score with the air. Dude, that... Why do some of these places look like diners? That does not look like a bar. It doesn't even look like it's open. Yes, you can see the sign. So that's good because that's usually a mistake that a lot of these bars make. But look at the windows. There's nothing in there that makes it look open. How dated is this? It doesn't match the rest of the building. <laughs> I know, that's a problem. It doesn't match the rest of the building. I think that... You know, because it is dated, if it was like an 80s themed bar, it would work. But yeah, it's just not congruent with the rest of the building. So tell me about your dad and your uncle. They kind of bought the bar and went in together. So has Randy always been the manager? Yes, because my dad has a second job. Okay. If you're the owner of a business, you should not have to work a second job to support this thing. It's very hard to manage a bar when you have to focus on another job. Like, it gets too distracting. Being a manager itself is a pretty demanding job, and it requires a lot of focus. Gotcha. And how often does your dad work? He bartends on Friday and Saturday. How do they get along? They don't talk right now. They don't talk at all. At all. That's what happens when you work with family. We see this every single time <laughs> like half of these episodes of water rescue this is like people are working with their relatives or their spouses or their girlfriends boyfriends you know whatever i don't know why this always happens if siblings or friends and family or partners have experience in the field yeah that will work but they think it's a good idea to buy a bar with their friends brothers parents it's not it's a very demanding job you need qualified people to run the place. It doesn't add up. My dad's here two days and he's here every day. Interesting that you should mention that. Do you know that 60% of family businesses that fail do so because of family issues? Yeah. I don't think he ever brought up that statistic before, but yeah, even if you just watched this show or, you know, any type of related reality show where they have a restaurant and stuff, like, a lot of these places that are failing, they have some kind of family-owned business. Like, it sounds good on paper. And yeah, maybe... In the 60s and 70s, like a family-owned bar, a family-owned restaurant, those can work. But back then, you know, the laws were very lax. Nowadays, you got health inspectors, like permits that you need. There's a legal stuff. Having good intentions alone is not enough. You need people who have a lot of experience, who are aware of the local laws, with experience regarding food handling safety, you know, things like that. They bicker back and forth. I mean, they'll talk on each other. This is what you tell them. They're gonna take me to work. I was trying to get a credit card paid big time. I don't need him back here with me. So are they more interested? Wow, this is like super confusing because they're twins too. I thought was like, is he just talking to himself? Sitting hurting yeah. each other than making money? It, it seems as if they are. You guys should get along. Oh, you, you guys, you guys That's what I'm saying, you guys should get along. Wow, even the customers are giving them advice. They should get along. Like, that's not... Is that really that such of a controversial idea? Running a bar with a sibling itself is a pretty bad idea, but it's a half a step better. You can just get along. He's run off all the business. He thinks it's a big joke. It's worthless. This bar is selling because the brothers have a lot of issues. I'm talking to him. Yeah. Freaking customers know why this place is failing. This kind of drama is so obvious. Do you think customers want to come back if they have to get stuck between this kind of drama? It's one thing when coworkers don't get along, but when you get this family drama, that's you know that's a little different than when two coworkers don't get along. People don't want to see that. People go to the bar to escape their own drama. They don't want to get into someone else's. So what the hell is going on here? They're attracting the old crowd. You know, people like me are wanting to come in here. My grandpa comes here. Yeah, that's not good. You want to attract the young crowd. That's where the money is. There's nothing wrong with attracting the old crowd, but you can't ignore the younger crowd. That's the problem. Especially this town's a younger crowd. So why are you going for the wrong demographic? It looks like a place for older people to hang out and a lot of old people maybe work here. Got uh, oh. 
Oh, even if I was old, I don't think I'd want to hang out there. It's like so low energy and it's kind of depressing. The owners themselves aren't that old, so why do they want to attract a crowd that's older than them? Guys, this isn't a bar. It's a freaking sock hop. I know, I know. <laughs> See, that's why I don't take people in there. What do they drink when they come? Water, you know? Flop. I know, it's like, not to overgeneralize, but you have these older people, a lot of them, you know, are slowing down on partying, so they're probably not drinking anymore. And guess what? Even if they do drink, they're probably not gonna drink as much as a younger person. Especially when prices these days are a lot higher than they used to be. They're probably not going after the premium products. I'll be a he Gilligan. Randy, is he a good manager? No. Doesn't hold people to high standards. No, I have a drink I need to make. Can you give me just... <sighs> I know, it's so obvious to the customers. It's so bad that the customers notice and they know that the family drama is screwing up with the professionalism here. Like, can you imagine working for managers who act like children? How are you gonna respect them? One second. Okay. Is she a good bartender? No. Erica, 40 minutes late at least every day. <sighs> Seven years working here, late every day. Is this even a job for her or just she just phoning it because you know that she can't get fired? And again, the managers themselves are not professional, so it's kind of like, why do I need to show on time when these managers are arguing like children? Would that work in your restaurant? Absolutely right? not. We're about a mile from the baseball stadium Coffee and the football and stadium. That's, That's right. right. They're only a mile from two stadiums. Why are they not? This doesn't make any sense. They're so close to this, these two sports and you have this huge crowd. I'm assuming that a lot of people are gonna drive from out of town here and you're not even like going after them. Like why would you? Ugh. A lot of these places, these bar rescues are in the middle of nowhere, but they're within a mile of two different stadiums. Like why aren't they going after the sports crowd? Local sports fan Rachel enters RG's Lounge, a 3,600 square foot space featuring a horseshoe bar with only one service well and no- Why is there only one service bar? Oh my god, like how- why is this bar designed like this? I'm not a fan of horseshoe shaped bars, but if that was the case, why don't you have two service stations, one on one side? and one on the other. Why would you have it right there? I mean, look at this way. Because there's only one service bar, the majority of the drinks being made will require the bartender to have their backs to the customers. You should always be able to make drinks with visibility of a few guests, but look at it. There's only what, one, two, three, four, like five guests that he can see on that little corner. Again, I'm not a fan of these horseshoe shaped bars because no matter which side you are on, you are kind of forced to have your back on half of the guests. If you put the service well right there, you're pretty much forcing the bartender to not be able to see what's going on around him. And no POS system. <sighs> no POS system? So how does the bartender get the drink tickets from the servers? Do they have to go in front of that horseshoe bar and give that bartender a ticket? Or do they go to the side? Either case, if they do have to give the ticket to the bartender on the service side, that means the servers will have to be waiting in front of that heavy traffic area, you know, blocking a lot of guests. Or if they choose to have the expo, you know, the drink station on a separate area of the horseshoe bar, then you have to like run back and forth around that horseshoe shaped bar. And worst of all, they're all handwritten because they don't have a POS system. I can't wait to see how they run this place because I can't even imagine the logistics and how this could work. Here we are. She's already been sitting there for a minute. Yeah, you come here a lot? Not even acknowledging her at all. Why have you become such a Looks like there's two bartenders behind the bar. I mean, it's not that busy. What, is this a strangely designed bar? Like, they probably don't even notice her. You're all that stuff. You're a piece of Okay. Let's okay. see how long it takes. Okay, look at this. So, you're three minutes and she still didn't get noticed. The bartender should always be scanning the bar for like new guests or whether or not the current guest needs something. Call Erica over just to get acknowledged. Can I get a fruity drink? What's in that? Vodka, <laughs> red stuff, soda water, and I think a lime. Oh, that's scary, huh? Vodka, grenadine, I guess? What is, that sounds like it's gonna be so sweet. I'll try a beer. It's not cold. Okay, she's got a <sighs> Oh my god. If you <laughs> if your bar can't make good cocktails, you better be damn sure that you can pour a cold beer. So who's running the kitchen? Uh Walt. How long has he been there? As long as I remember. Uh, Kids haven't been eighteen years. That is like a lot of experience, but once again, 
as we've seen in these other bar rescue videos, it's not about experience. It's about relevant experience. Any motivation? Just what do I need to clean for? Nobody's gonna hold me to a high standard. Uh. No. Did he just wipe his mouth? And now he's wiping the board? You have got to be kidding me. This must be the French dip she ordered. Mike, why is there a microwave? And that thing looks frozen. Are they gonna cook this thing frozen? Oh my God, this can't be happening. That particular cheesesteak meat, one, is not meant for a French dip. Secondly, they're frozen and meant to be put directly on a griddle. Look at it's it. It's just yeah, steaming. Man. You got your work out of that. So he microwaves it to defrost it and then puts it on the grill? What? Why would this is this person has 18 years experience behind the kitchen? No, this this is not possible. It can't be. This this can't be. Look at the grease. Yes. That pan does not look like it has been washed ever. That's so he just wipes it. Doesn't wash it. That's just old oil. You have got to be kidding me. I'm gonna send this away. You're going with that. Have you had the French dip? No. I'm happy. <laughs> What the heck? There's a customer like screaming? That person lost her ability to talk three cocktails ago. Having a chugging oh. oh, no, no, no. Overserved. Like, it's the one thing when the guests are like, you know, quietly being drunk and, you know, about to pass out. But this guest is being loud and obnoxious. It's very obvious that she's overserved. Like, she should not be drinking that beer. Uh, oh. oh. Tiffany. Tiffany needs to be cut off. Yeah. yeah. She's what is she doing? The owners, they're here. They have to get her out of there. She shouldn't be drinking anything right now. Loud, interrupting other bar guests. Cheers. Is it over time? Get your dad, he's oblivious to it. They're giving her another one. I... You have got to be kidding me you're the owners and you're gonna risk losing your liquor license for this person that needs to be cut off and your business is already in danger like what are you doing i hate when bartenders are irresponsible <laughs> randy is sitting Jeez, like it's not there's no way that the owners can't see this like that they're oblivious they know that they're overpouring. She was being loud at the bar, and now she's interrupting random tables. And nobody is stopping this? And this is happening right in front of them. The fact is, when bar owners are irresponsible, people get hurt. She just took another shot! No, this is... <gasps> this is... Oh my god, this can't be happening. So they know that there's cameras there. They're doing this knowing that John Taffer could be watching at any moment. They must be doing this all the friggin' time for them to be this casual about overpouring. It's just irresponsible and it's wrong. Now she's gonna leave and get in her car and drive no, home? No. no, I'm not letting it happen. How drunk is she? Pretty drunk. Pretty drunk. Should she? <sighs> so he knows, of course he knows. It's like, he just doesn't care. You're really gonna risk getting a customer hurt, trying to stumble away home? just to make a few bucks. This is not only irresponsible, it's illegal. You can lose your license. Whatever happens to the guest, the cops are gonna trace back to the last, you know, the places that they've been drinking at. And you could be totally responsible for what happens to a guest if they get hurt or hurt someone else. She's gotten her last drink. I'm talking to him about you because I don't want you drinking anymore. And if he serves you anymore and endangers you, he's an ass. John Taffer is an arrogant ass. He's trying to protect your business. Like, this is a huge liability here. Do you, like, not see this? And he's the owner. He knows that they can lose everything from this. Now, is she gonna drive home? Do you even know that? Sitting back there oblivious to the whole thing, right, Randy? No. You saw this, didn't you? Yes, yeah, I saw it. But you did nothing. Not yeah, like, she was right there yelling at his table. <sighs> What are they doing? Like, I don't understand. Like, there's one thing when you're inexperienced and you don't know how, you know, certain things should be cooked or what the, you know, where to put the POS system. But this is, I mean, this is like pretty obvious that you cannot be doing this. You cannot be having guests this drunk. You can't be over serving people. These are basic things that even people with no managing experience, they already know it's wrong. Look at what you create. Tiffany. No, it's not normal. And you trying to do some that you're not supposed to. Don't tell me they're gonna let her drive 
her keys are on her hands. Oh my God, this is, they better not let her drive. When a bar owner lets a customer leave over intoxicated, it's immoral. That customer can get hurt, get arrested, hurt somebody else. Get out of the way. That's why I called the cab. Jeez, good thing John Taffer was there. Like, I can't imagine what would have happened if she drove home. That, that was insane that they would have, if John Taffer wasn't there, they would have probably let her drive home. I walk, she had shots as well as beers. Uh oh. <laughs> She's gonna get arrested before she even gets to the cab. Wow. Your number one responsibility is to keep people safe. That is the number one responsibility we have, right? Jeez. She's gonna get arrested right in front of the bar that overserved her. And John Taffer just got here. And you blow it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of guests get sent home, but man, she got arrested before she even had a chance to get into her cab. I can't even imagine what's gonna happen next. Like this is another layer of problem. That's another problem that they're gonna have to deal with in addition to having John try to rescue their bar. They got the guest arrested. I've never seen that. I think that's the first time this has happened in so far. Intoxicated customer fighting with the police. She got arrested for disorderly conduct and spent the night in jail. Had we not served her the last two drinks, maybe that wouldn't happen. I know, the fact that they knew her by her name, she was a regular, like, is this really gonna be how you treat your regulars, overserve them? Now they have all this legal stuff that they have to deal with just so you can make a few extra dollars. Two extra shots and two beers, like how much is that? Compared to like how much she has to pay for bail and later court fees and all that other stuff. It's irresponsible and it's dangerous. Now I want to hear from the staff. I want your perceptions of what's going on here. We need a younger crowd. What demographic? <sighs> yes, that's very obvious. Like why do the owners, why are they trying to get this older crowd like they're not drinking they're not drinking they're not buying like so they have a free birthday parties you know whatever if it comes to this bar 65 and up 65 mm -hmm. and up 65 and up people who are retired that's insane this bar might be the oldest demographic so far in bar rescue like i can't imagine going to work and just serving people who are like low energy probably bringing the energy down for other guests. And worst of all, they don't even buy anything. And you're right next to two stadiums. What do you think's wrong with the bar? It's the fighting between Rick and Randy. Even if they're not here together, it's, it's just negative all around. It's, it's a trickle down theory. Yeah, like this really is demoralizing to see your managers slash owners argue with each other. And that affects not only the bar staff because you know, they're coming in late, they're like, whatever, this place, you can't really respect a place where the managers are just bickering. And of course, the guests we saw earlier, they notice, and like, I wouldn't want to go to a bar when the family drama is well known in the community. Well, what's going on? Like, why, why did you even decide to buy this thing together anyways, like from the start? I want to sit them down separately and see what this animosity is all about. Rick is just bitter, he's just grumpy. He's always been the angry one. He's been like this his whole life. If you're so full of anger, why would you want to open a bar? You know, you got to talk to people. You got to be a people person. You know, as a bartender or as, you know, a bar owner, the bar is supposed to elevate people, like make them forget about their own personal problems. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm tired of being jabbed at. Pretty soon you got jabbed back. You know. What? People say, I'm Rick the dick, it's because he's jabbing them, but I'm in the corner, I gotta fight back. And then all of a sudden, I'm the ass Like, I don't understand, why, why do they want to run a bar again? I'm not an angry person, I'm a hurt person. Why, Rick? An inheritance, what do you mean? He inherited everything, I got a Lincoln Town car. My mom. Is this what this is about? some inheritance drama. So there was drama before this 
they got this place, so why did they decide that it was a good idea to work together in this thing, if there was that to begin with? I was my mom's favorite, I'm gonna tell you. My real dad raised him, my stepdad, and my mom raised me. My mom and Rick didn't get along. He never even had a nice word to say to her. <sighs> so, it's not just the twins fighting, but the Rick, the, the angrier one, also had problems with the mom. He seems like an overall just a bitter person. Like why I, I, why did he want to open a bar with his twin brother if he couldn't even get along with their mom? They told me my mother hated my guts. And, 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 and she wanted him to have everything. This is like, wow, this is a deeper issue than I thought. It's not just bickering between the two brothers. One of the sons and the mom hate each other and now the inheritance drama and uh, yeah this is like beyond John's qualifications. You know you could put the computers in, fix this, but that, you know, but in the end the brothers are still going to have to work with each other and I can't even imagine how this is going to work out. I'm just going to take a peek around all right? All right. Is that good? Hey John. Oh boy. <laughs> this is inexcusable John. Oh! Oh! What? What the heck is that? What is this? This is where they keep their beer bottle. It's in Why is it full of this brown? Is that rust? What is that? Is that bacteria? What is that? In contact with this. Oh, that's gross. That never drained right though. You do it once a week. Barely drains right, so he knows that this is. Oh my God. That's where they put people's beers. Why would you like, uh, like you said, there's a lot of things that you don't need any experience that you should already know is wrong. And this is one of them. Well, how can you serve that to your guests and think that that's okay? John, it gets worse. We've got fruit flies. <sighs> oh my god. So what, they don't cover their pore spouts at night? Oh, there's so many dead fruit flies in there. Let me show you how disgusting this really is, guys. Now, you're seeing the bugs. You know what you don't see? The feces. <sighs> this? Oh my god. Isn't it's not this goes beyond like on top of this probably nearly unfixable family drama, you have this with bartenders who have been here for what seven eight years letting this happen and nobody has noticed like can this place even be rescued randy you're the leader right what do you say when you look at this the operating manager's job set up a cleaning standard what needs to be done each day and each week and the operating manager will be my brother it's just a blame game right here you own this place you should be more concerned with this than anyone else ever have a cleaning schedule no it ain't no cleaning schedule no cleaning schedule and this guy has been here for 18 years you have got to be kidding me so let me get this straight he's been here for 18 years and they have never given him a cleaning schedule you really think this guy's gonna clean things on his own if nobody is punishing him for not cleaning so there's a potential that this kitchen hasn't been cleaned in 18 years i've seen you know neglect from three years, five years, but this is almost two decades. How often do you clean? I products? clean them every week. Every week, what? Every once a week, you clean both. Every week, you're full. Of I find that hard. No, that's not. You don't have stuff like this just laying there, like gigantic, burnt pieces of crap flowing there if you clean this every week. Uh, you call me what you want to call me. There's no way. This is cleaning every week. Look at this. Oh my god. I'm not even scraping it. <sighs> that does not build up in just a week. That's years of neglect. I'm slicing it! This is what the bacon was cooked on. Oh, oh. Look, can you- It's still not cleaned. Yeah, he just wiped it with a towel, just reuses the same pan. Now that burnt bacon grease just going to the next batch. And yeah, the kitchen's not open, so what's the excuse right now? Like, how hard is it to put that thing to the dishwasher? You see this dripping down? How many times was the bacon cooked on this and served to people? It ain't gonna be spotless, but it's clean. If it's not, it's not clean, like, bacon grease doesn't get that thick when it's, like, new. What I do is what I do. Well, what you do isn't good enough. Well, it's a man's it is. I don't... <laughs> oh, God. 
guys who've done this thing for like 18 years, they're not gonna change, all right? Can't teach an old dog new tricks. This guy is pretty much set on, he's not gonna change. The way, <laughs> just fire him and hire some new guy who just got out of culinary school. Heck, just hire someone off of a fast food restaurant and they're probably up to date with modern health standards. I don't give a about well, you. I don't give a about you. Really? Well then, or I'm gonna leave. You better get him the hell in so line. Said, but he ain't gonna come back here and talk to me like I ain't here. And I'm gonna get man. Well, you can what look you at mean? what you what want. Do you defend it? And I ain't got nothing. Like, duh. This guy, like, does he know that once he leaves this place, he's probably not gonna be able to find another job? You really gonna argue? on this, like, that this is clean. You can't be serious. Like, would he even eat his own food? And if he says yes, that's gross. You should not have him here. You fire him. He's gonna get your customers sick. Huge liability. Get somebody at entry level, you know, cooking position that you can pay cheaper and who's probably gonna be more professional than him. Oh, and these guys are going whoa, down whoa, in two because of it. They ain't got nothing to do with going down no mother I'm tube. not listening to your bull No bull You! Oh my god! He like shoved him and the fryer is right behind him. This is not good. I mean, we've seen John Taffer get assaulted before, but in the kitchen, this is like really, really dangerous here. When you infuse new people into a business, complacency disappears. Candace, <laughs> Diana, and Marina, they're local bartenders looking for work. Now we gotta go to competition. Wow, he's pinning them against younger employees. Yeah, that's the problem. You don't have any competition, you become complacent, you start to not care. Bartending is a very high turnover rate because you know it's a very physically and mentally demanding job. And sometimes you get this older crowd, it's not just an older crowd, like some people just can't handle it. And when you don't have competition, you have the same people working there over and over and over. They think they can get away with anything. So yeah, let's see what happens, see if they can keep up with the new blood. I think I can do my job, and I think I do my job well, but if they're better than me, then God bless them. 17 and a half years. She has more experience than me. Uh, oh, wow. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. John and I have worked to put together three cocktails for you to do tonight. We're starting with something super simple. It's a kettle, one, and soda. We're doing the captain's choice. One of the cocktails is kettle and soda. They better not screw that one up. <laughs> I just need to stay focused, make sure those drinks are going out the way they're supposed to, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. You're actually pouring from the wrong glass. You want to be pouring from your mixing. <sighs> yes, Hawthorne strainer goes on the mixing tin to pour out. The julep strainer goes on the glass. How do you make this kind of mistake with this much experience? As I said before, it's not about experience. It's about relevant experience. You could be doing something wrong for 17 and a half years and not know it. I think we have a wrong ingredient from we Janice. Do. You can we dump do. it and start over. I love my job, but working with these new girls, oh, it's very, very nerve wracking. Yeah, in, in the U.S., bartenders make their money off of tips. There's not really an hourly rate that you can survive off just alone. And the thing is, this is for their own good. They have to speed up if they want to make any money. Some of these bartenders said they have children to take care of. So, you know, like the faster you become, the more money you make. So, yeah, they should see this as a plus. It's the first time they've seen this kind of speed by seeing like how fast the younger bartenders are. You're falling behind. Yeah, I've been waiting for 25 minutes. Maybe longer. Man, these are simple drinks. There's only three of them, and one of them's a kettle soda. I've been waiting and trying to order food, but they've been so busy that they haven't really taken the time to like look up to notice that I was sitting here waiting. I can't even read that. Not only is there yeah, no PO system. You have to do this handwriting, old school stuff, and you have to manly walk over to the kitchen, give them the ticket. It's this system is it's too outdated. Like it's not designed for high volume. And then you can't read the handwriting. Yeah, this is like not good. Their infrastructure here sucks. Some four handwritten tickets. There's no table numbers. No table numbers? What? They never put the table numbers. Where are you gonna run those food items to? Just gonna auction off again? Like, please don't tell me they're gonna auction off these food items. We were ringing the bell, ringing the bell, ringing the bell, and nobody was coming. 
there's no system for food running. Yeah, do they have a food runner? They were all bartenders. Who's running the food? Good job, Walt. So somebody's got to help out here. Oh my God. They just gave this motivational speech that this is a pressure test, you need to help out. You have all these food items and the managers are not even running the food. Like now the food needs to come out and he just like walked away when he can clearly see the kitchen is doing what they're supposed to do. The food is coming out but nobody's running the food. My best. Yes! It's great in there. Yeah. It. The girls were really stepping up but there is no management behind this bar. It's pretty insane. He shouldn't be behind the bar pouring the drinks. There's enough bartenders behind the bar. He needs to run the food. That's where they need the manager's help. This is in the kitchen at the expo station to run the food. There's four or five of us here. There's only one station to make drinks. It's stressful. <laughs> of course. They only have one station to make the drinks. They have three plus bartenders and they're sharing a well. That horseshoe bar is pretty big. Like I can't believe like they have that only that small little bar in that corner where you can't even see the guests. So what are they doing? They're taking turns or something or are they just grabbing the ice and then moving to the... I have no idea how this system works. There are so many bodies behind this bar and no one seems to know what station they're working. We watched this whole section be served twice. We had never been served. Maybe there's a lot of us yeah, that's a problem. Like, you have your back against your guests. Wh wh whatever they're doing, they need to stay where they are so they can see their side of the horseshoe bar and just not worry about the guests behind them. Should be another bartender taking care of one side of the horseshoe and uh, another bartender taking care of, of the other side of the horseshoe so that you can see everything and what's wrong like, rather than just having bartenders focus on the same side of the bar. Each other and communicate. We're going to divide the bar like, like a plus sign. One of us here, one of us in that corner, one of us Somebody else here. I had to take over. Yeah, this place doesn't need any more than three. Actually, I think it could be done with just two service wells. And right now there are four bartenders. But it's because the design is so inefficient that they need this many people to be able to do something that only two bartenders should be able to take care of. Of course, there's no POS system. You have this old school cash register machine. I'm curious, like, how do the bartenders bring in food? If they bring in the food, do they have to walk into the kitchen too? And then give the food order to the kitchen and then they have to come back to the bar? Ugh, I have like, this is horrible. Probably the, one of the worst setups I've ever seen. Be proud, Walt, you're busting ass. Walt really kind of hung in there. He did the best that he could, and I give him a lot of credit. If we set him up with some systems, this guy can shine. Walt, hang in there. Okay, so this guy seems to be a very fast learner, but... This is like one guy running this whole kitchen. He's actually not doing as bad as I thought he was. Like he's actually doing a lot better. Like for one person running this whole kitchen, that's actually pretty impressive. And um, it seems like the customers like it too. But yeah, like, one person is not enough. This kitchen's way too big for just one cook. What do you think of management tonight? I haven't seen them in the same place at the same time. There's no communication. They just walk around. They don't know what the hell to do. I, I know and. If they are doing something, they're behind the bar helping the bartenders, but the bartenders are doing fine right now. They cut all cut up. They don't need another body, especially when there's only one station to make drinks. One of the managers should be behind the kitchen helping out. Like, that's where they need to the help. Either helping the cook or helping, you know, run the food orders. I asked these brothers to work together as a team. These guys won't even talk to each other. <sighs> He's just leaning against the wall like that. Come on, like, this is... Look how busy it is. You have two extra bodies and they're not even doing anything. No, sorry, so I, don't, I can't do this part with it because he's just the main man. Tonight he acted like he was the greatest. You really gonna talk to customers like that? Trash talk your brother, your business partner? Like, this business cannot work if you guys can't get along. <laughs> I don't, like, I honestly don't know why they thought this was a good idea to begin with. Walt, you plugged all night long. There was nobody coming to pick up food, was there? I asked you guys to work together and get coordinated. Were they working together? It's not... Come on, the... <laughs> yeah, you know, they actually... Nobody did a bad job today, which was actually very surprising. Back of the house, front of the house actually did a pretty good job. It's the managers. They're not talking to each other's. They're not... This night, distress test. They needed the most help, you know, in the back of the house. 
There's two of them. There should not have been any excuse for the food to not be run. Just sitting in the cold like that. Everything I told you to do, you didn't freaking do. Randy, you are undermining the business by bad-mouthing your brother to customers. Yes. Why did you do that? What purpose would that serve? This is a stress test. This is... Can you like look for something to do instead of complain to customers? If you're gonna complain about your business, it's like, do you want this bar to be rescued? So, I wanted you to have a new contemporary brand and I gave you a sports bar that I think is gonna bring it home. On a count of three, turn around. Whoa! That looks so much better. So it's gonna be like a video game Sports bar. <laughs> Doesn't look like a friggin' diner from the 80s. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa, look at all those video game screens. Wow. Damn. 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 Look at this. Come here. You got two service Look, wells. Two ice stands. Yes! Two service wells, that's what I said. This this is all you need. Two bartenders can run that. Uh, two service walls, one on each side of that. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna play here. Wow. I'm gonna love to come to work. The young people are gonna love this place. I'm just amazed that John pulled off what he did because I never. Those are private rooms for video games. That is so cool. A PS3 from PlayStation. And Electronic Arts gave you guys two of their most popular games Battlefield 4 and Need for Speed Rivals. <laughs> Wow, this is like probably the first bar rescue episode where they got sponsored by a video game company. To the bar. When I got here, we had one station. Now you got two complete workstations. Yes. A POS system from future POS. One of the biggest problems with this. Yeah, you need that POS system, especially when we deal with this volume. Like this handwriting stuff, it's in the past. You know, I like old school stuff, but that stuff cannot work that well on a modern high volume setting. Oh, one B and one strip, thank you. Here we go, yo. First ticket. How much more efficient that POS system is. Like, they have a printer. You don't have to worry about not being able to read the handwriting. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave it on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.